Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Chalice Chats. You may be looking at the screen here and thinking, wait, that's a different number of blood echoes. That's not exactly the same. Uh, you're correct. So what happened was <laughs> I started uh, recording, at least I thought, uh, spoilers, uh, the next episode, this episode, and realized uh, after I made a reasonable attempt at the next room, I managed to kill a bunch of the enemies, basically all of them except the kidnapper, and then the kidnapper finished me off. Um, so I feel pretty good about that, honestly. Uh, but after I had done all of that and died, I looked to see my recording to see how it was going, and it wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, I recorded nothing, and so I thought, you know what, I need to uh, I need to recreate this because uh, the spirit that I left off on in the last episode, can I get through this next part of the passageway with the limited resources that I have available to me? That's all completely out the window if I come back and like when I recreated this, I actually had I did much better than the first time I managed to make it here, which is heartening. Should I die again? Because uh, it means that it, I will potentially have more resources should I need to try a third time or more. But uh, for now, uh, anyway, I decided, you know what, I want to keep with the spirit of the sort of cliffhanger I left off on last time, uh, fired off all my bullets so that I could get back to zero, uh, used all my blood vials so I could get back down to two, and so basically the only thing that's different uh, this time rather than last time is the number of blood echoes uh, that I have. And uh, I do have a little bit of additional knowledge uh, about how the next room is set up, but I don't think that's going to change things too much. Uh, be, out of necessity, I have uh, equipped my Molotov cocktails here uh, in, somewhat in advance. Um, I discovered they were a good way to draw enemies and do a little bit of damage at the same time. I believe in Bloodborne they end up uh, scaling a little bit with the Arcane stat. So even though they don't do a whole lot of damage, they do do some. And they can potentially draw more enemies than a pebble, which, as you are about to see, is uh, something rather handy. Uh, the other... Uh, yep, here we go. All these, all these enemies, there's a whole... Uh, I'm dealing with this one right now. But as you can see, there's a whole parade of them. Now, the last time I tried this, I did not get any blood vial drops. Indeed. Just kind of like that. And uh, so that's uh, that was disappointing. It remains disappointing, because I'm really hoping I could get some blood vials. Oh, and uh, this is something I did last time as well. Um, wasn't entirely sure if it was the smart choice, but this at least gives me the option of some bullets if I need them. So, yeah, and there you can see in the distance that whole parade of enemies. Uh, the one enemy hanging out by that pillar there and that uh, enemy with the flaming weapon there, those are both uh, Molotov cocktail throwers in and of themselves. So, um, they're a little bit of a problem. I got, I feel like I got pretty lucky in being able to lure the one to the right there pretty close uh, last time. So we're going to see what happens this time, whether or not that luck holds. Oh yeah, okay, well, yeah, look over there. What what was that? Alright, significantly smaller number of enemies uh, than there were before. Yep, come this way. I'm just going to miss several times, so there's no need for you to be concerned. I mean, odds are I'm just going to miss you, right? Alright. Fortunately, y this time, I came out on top. All right, we're off to a promising start. Only wasted one Molotov getting their attention. And have significantly reduced the numbers of the paraders. Come on. <laughs> Patience, I, I believe, is, uh, is somewhat critical here. Because those uh, wandering foes can cause a whole bunch of problems. And if I engage those uh, Molotov throwers with the roaming enemies still around, uh, I'm just asking for it. Oh, I think uh, you can see that at the moment there is a Wandering Madness in the center there. I think that's what it is. I never really got to verify it last time. I'm glad this uh, individual enemy was close enough that I didn't have to waste a Molotov. That means I can just throw one at you. Miss, and then throw another one at you. Hit, and uh, draw you this way. And that makes two Molotovs that I've uh, managed to connect with this uh, hook enemy with. Okay, uh, I would like you to maintain some focus here, buddy. See, there comes the Molotovs. That's the that's the danger of fighting, remaining engaged in that room. Uh-huh, 
There we go. Down you go. Okay. Once again, they're really not dropping much that I would like them to drop. Now, where did that Molotov thrower with the flaming weapon go? I don't like enemies that I cannot track. That is not good. I feel like it would have gone to the left. Maybe? Just waiting to take a Molotov to the face. Oh, there it is. Hello. All right, if I come over this way. Oh, this is something else that I can't uh, reproduce. That particular corpse, um, that particular female corpse, right by where the guy's standing right now, had four bullets previously. Okay, all right. The last time I dealt with that guy, he hit me with a Molotov in the face before I could close in. So this is an improvement. Hello, friend. Would you like to move closer to me? I'm a very tempting target, I'm sure. Yes. Yes, I see you throwing Molotovs over there. Uh-huh. Yep, you're getting closer. You know what would help you get even closer, my friend? Is if you were to... Yes, move forward, just like that. Now, don't mind me. I'm just going to keep backing up here. Just going to keep backing up. You know, and you can just, you can continue to close in. That's 100% fine with me. Continue getting closer to me. Yeah, okay. Keep standing there. Oh, even better. Forget about me, so I don't have to deal with your Molotovs. All right, so long. Okay. So, uh, we are back to the prime conundrum for this particular room is what to do about this particular kidnapper. I'm looking above because what I'm thinking of doing... Well, what I was thinking of doing a second ago was a call beyond, but I realized without the four blood bullets... Uh, not blood bullets, the, full, uh, the four quicksilver bullets that I picked up, a call beyond isn't an option even if I wanted it to be. Because I need seven and I've only got five. I could use... Um, I could use the executioner's gloves... However, that particular enemy has a tendency to buff itself when I do that. And if it buffs itself from far away, I'm not able to get the follow-up, like, backstab, stagger sort of thing going on. So, I think the thing to do is, yep, get him to close in on me. Alright, I'm going to back up again. Now fire the Executioner's Gloves. And, yep, now I don't care if you power up. Okay, I don't think this visceral is going to finish. Indeed. But I do think you getting up is going to be fatal. Excellent. Second try is the charm. And, you know, I feel like, even though I had a little bit of extra knowledge, I was missing some resources here. So I don't particularly uh, consider that much of a failure. I feel like that was a pretty uh, reasonable representation of how an assault on this room with limited resources could go. Oh, boy. I'm glad I was successful this time. However, this is only one of two passages that I saw down this way past the hunter. And there may well be more dangers ahead that I do not have any answers for any longer. All that for some 2 mold 5. Still, the, uh... Challenge of combat is something of its own thrill, its own reward. I think that's one of the keys of enjoying the Chalice Dungeons, is having fun with just the situations the game throws at you. I am uh, smashing things with my Fire Cleaver, by the way, because um, I'm trying to save durability on my Tonitrus. Okay. Well, that's this passage uh, crossed off and dealt with. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, why do I hear, like, fire? That's weird. All right, where am I? Oh, shining coins are not on the list. We need to fix that. There we are. There we are again. All right, that path has been explored. Anything over here? Nope. Not seeing any enemies over here. I didn't in my, like, cursory check anyway, but still. 
worth a look. All right, I'm hearing fire, which means I think, yep, this is going to be a fire weapon enemy. Bring it on, my friend. I said bring it on. Don't walk slowly through the doorway. Yes. Thank you for missing. My favorite thing. Yep. And get attacked to death. My favorite thing. Oh, I don't even need to be doing it. Because I have my Tonitrus here. Okay, well. That's one uh, one less enemy that I have to waste uh, worry about wasting durability on. Oh. I almost completely overlooked this gargoyle. Um. Hmm. Tell you what I'm hopeful of. I'm hopeful that you won't notice me and that you will have a very pleasant uh, gem drop for me, for my Tonitrus. Uh, I, I couldn't read fast enough. <laughs> I picked it up and I wanted to keep moving because there might still be other enemies around this room. Um, but now that I know there are gargoyles around, I got to keep an extra sharp eye out for them. Because they are just the fact that they hold still and are gray, gives them a very creepy way of blending in. All right, I'm not getting like shot at, which is good. Sometimes they, there's like treasures in the corners, but it looks like there are not this time. Should probably be a little bit more forward looking when it comes to uh, seeing what's up the stairs. I'm very glad that there was no bell ringer in this room. This, this setup frequently features bell ringers. Oh, hmm. My favorite method of dealing with that big guy is not going to work. Uh, what's that, uh, what's that item over there? Are you going to notice me if I move very quietly, very slowly? No, 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 no. Why would you? Oh, crap. Oh, well. I was hoping that would be something a little bit more useful than two mold. Maybe, uh, four blood vials, for instance. All right. How about I just sneak up behind you? How about that? Yep, hit you as hard as I can. And then run away. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Let's find out. You gonna come down the stairs? Probably, apparently not. Okay. That's fine. I, I hear him moving around. You back to... Yep, you're back to your same old position over there. Is that a gun in your hand? Or a club? I can't tell. Alright, well, I'm not going to find out. I was thinking of engaging in melee just from the front, but I think that's foolish with my resources as low as they are. I think taking the... Guaranteed kill here is the way to go. Also, turns out that was a gun. Running up into melee probably would have been relatively smart. Oh, thank you for the blood vials, finally. Now that I <laughs> now that I basically don't need them. Still, uh, you know, I appreciate it. And what is... Oh, it's the, uh, the Lost Blade of Mercy. We have another one of the weapons, uh, like unique sort of items that I wanted to cross off my checklist. Hooray! I like being able to gather up these things, uh, kind of on my own. I don't, that one's not quite as, like, crucial as the Ring of Betrothal, but it's still nice to have that on camera. This is more footage I should probably save, because it might come in handy when I'm talking about the weapon variants in the, uh, Blood Gem special. But I believe that fully crosses off this particular set of paths. And I'm not going up there to potentially deal with the hunter. I'm going to use one of my bold hunter's marks. And I will uh, see you again after that. We're going to take a look at the boss. Hello again, everyone. I am back from the dream. I have spent a bunch of my... Um, <laughs> practically all of my blood echoes, as is just good policy, really. And now we are going to sprint past all of this stuff and we're going to open the doorway. We're going to see who the boss is of Layer 2. And it's, whoa, really? The Beast Possessed Soul. Interesting. Okay. 
talked about this name a few times. Literally, it's just the Beast Possessed. I am somewhat surprised to find this to be the uh, boss, but, you know, that's cool. More excuses to fight it. And, you know, obviously, still a threat. Just died straight out. It's kind of weird knowing that I've talked about all the different Chalice bosses now except for one. <laughs> It's, uh, and then that one isn't going to appear anywhere else, so there is no boss that these chalices can throw at me that I haven't seen before. That's, uh, unusual feeling. Oh well, trying again. And, uh, you know, as part of that, as, uh, part of the consequence of that being, uh, it, well, instant death again. <laughs> That's not one of the consequences. I'll finish that thought in a second. As I was saying, one of the consequences of having basically seen all the bosses these root chalices can throw at me before is I don't really have any need to comment on the translations of their names unless I'm like moved to go above and beyond or something, you know, in some sort of uh, unusual case. So I can just go in and uh, fight this thing. Ow, I always, I always mistime that. I'm gonna miss, oh. I thought I was going to mistime that. I, I may have mistimed it, but I also was in a good position for it. I'm not in a, in a good position for that set of attacks. By the way, if you're curious, that uh, gargoyle that I killed uh, and got that gem drop from, uh, it did happen to drop a powerful nourishing gem. Uh, I don't believe it was one of the most powerful nourishing gems. Uh, and I would have used it on my Tonitrus, except, uh, the defect for it, because obviously this, this low, it's, it's a cursed gem. That's, like, the most powerful gems are all cursed, so that, uh, ah, finally! Um, so that, that's one thing to bear in mind, is that all these gems have their drawbacks. The particular drawback for this one was it, uh, lowered my weapon durability, and obviously on the Tonitrus, uh, that's not one of the more acceptable drawbacks. If it was another weapon, I'd be okay with the durability down, uh, but not on the Tonitrus. It, like, I've, you've seen already, if I die too much, which I'm doing right now, you have to reset the Tonitrus quite frequently. It runs out on you. So I'm not really looking to accentuate that particular property of the Tonitrus. All right. Having uh, made that little bit of a point... Uh, for anyone who is curious about my, um, you know, blood gem drop and setup and all that. I can now focus on the fight. And I am recalling, um, you know, very late, <laughs> that I think the last time I fought this enemy... Got it again. Getting better. Um, I think the last time that I fought this enemy, I was uh, discovering that the Executioner's Gloves deal a reasonable amount of damage to it. And... Uh, the way that it's the ranges work out, they are effective from a slightly longer range than its fireballs are effective at. So I am at some point uh, looking to mix those into my um, palette of attacks, my particular arsenal. Like now, for instance, would be a good opportunity to make some blood bullets. I'm going to just hide behind that uh, pillar there. Uh-huh. And I'll hide behind this statue that it's decided not to break. That's fine. Okay, I can outrange this attack. Uh-huh. And I can hit you with the Executioner's Gloves. There we go. Yep, still effective. Uh-huh. That's a mid-range thing. These go farther. Yep, I do like those Executioner's Gloves. Alright, and I'm going to stay backed up here. That cover is no longer cover. But that's okay. Take a physical swing this time. Doing 400 something per swing with my, um, what do you call it? Oops, saw cleaver. Oh no, wrong place to dodge. Well, my strategy is improving, but that's not to say that it's perfect. Certainly, uh, even if my larger strategy is perfect, my uh, particular implementation can always use use. I feel like I'm slowly relearning how to fight this particular boss. I don't doubt that in time I will be victorious. The only real question is which time. 
Okay, I think the timing is a little, yeah, is a little bit different on that double set of attacks. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's the other thing, is I very frequently get pulled in the direction of um, using my bullets to try and get an interrupt on this enemy, as opposed to uh, the Executioner's Gloves. Uh, I'm so bad at getting uh, interrupts for, like, viscerals and things that I kind of uh, yep, missed the dodge. Yep, and I missed the second dodge. Great. I suppose this is still harder than the last time I fought the uh, beast-possessed soul, because uh, the last time I had that particular fight, I don't think it was in a cursed dungeon. Actually, it can't have been, because I remember the uh, the only cursed dungeon I've been in, the, the bosses were the um, Keeper, the Watchdog, and the, what do you call it, um, Amygdala the Great One and its protectors. That was some weird positioning. Which means, sort of by default, uh, this is going to be the hardest version of this boss that I've ever fought, because I, had, I just have that much less HP to work with. Yep, that one goes far. Uh, you're definitely going to get hit by those gloves. Alright, good. And I happened to not get hit by the fire that time. Happy about that. Uh-huh. Get blasted. So, I think... You know, there's there's no real reason to draw out my multiple attempts here. Oops, I, I don't even know what I want to do. Um, so I think I will, uh, if this particular attempt is unsuccessful... Yep, you're coming at me now. Oop, that was a mistake. You, there were a lot of attacks that you could have chosen there, buddy. That would have been much more effective than what you ended up going with. Uh-huh, I'm just going to keep backing away. Well, trying to. Uh, apparently, I had my back to a corner. Uh, but anyway, uh, if this is, if this particular voiced attempt is unsuccessful, I think I'm just going to um, go straight to montage. There's no reason to draw it out, especially because the last episode ran on... Wait, no. Was it the last episode? I've recorded... <laughs> I've recorded too many of these in a row. Um, but I think in general, I have been trending towards longer episodes because, I mean, well, I'm in a harder... I'm in a, I'm in a harder area. <laughs> this place is tough. Yeah. And I also don't think I can, like, wholly rely on the Executioner's Gloves here. Because even though they're doing good damage for me... Uh-huh. Yep, I know, you're not done. Even though they're doing good damage for me and I can kind of reliably get them off from a comparative distance... Um, I feel like they need to be followed up with some degree of melee uh, in order to have enough damage to win. I'm not convinced that I can um, entirely deplete its HP just with the Executioner's Gloves. Maybe I can. I don't know. Uh, one of the things that I was noticing about uh, that Hunter enemy, for instance, that I... Um, not that last... It, not in that last exchange, but not too long ago, that I kind of uh, thought about implementing for fighting this particular boss, is that uh, there's a moment when uh, after the Executioner's Gloves connect, they cause a stagger. And uh, what ended up being very helpful in my fight against the Hunter down that one super deadly hallway was uh, I could rely on that slight stagger from the Executioner's Gloves if I was in close enough to um, go ahead and go in and get one more attack off. And in that case, I got two. So that's kind of a new way of using the Executioner's Gloves that I haven't really been relying on uh, quite as heavily, that I haven't used traditionally in the past. Oops. Oh, that's just fire to the face. And now I'm, I'm dead. All right. Well, uh, having got off that slight strategy thought, I'm switching to montage mode. I'll see you after I am successful. You missed. Uh-huh. I feel like I can get two after the jump attack, provided I'm in the right spot. 
not always in the right spot. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Flame wing. Easiest to deal with. Yep, double fireball. I'm gonna stay back and just let the thing do its own work. Double, double fireball again? Uh-huh. Very scary. Gotcha. Okay. How about this? Uh oh, it's the jump. Yep, can't interrupt the jump. Dodge? Got it. Ah, uh, didn't get the follow-up, though. That's okay. Yeah. I was just a little too far away for that one. How about that? Yeah, don't mind me. Just gonna chill out back here. I'm gonna make it safe before I go into Wackia. How about that? I don't know what that was supposed to be. Okay. Yep, I'll let you destroy that pillar. In exchange for getting five blood bullets? I'll let it happen. I wanna be just close enough to smack ya. Uh oh. Ah, that's real bad news. Oh, flame wing. Get interrupted. Get smacked. Yeah, flame wing. That's gonna hurt. Unless I dodge. Oh, flame wing. It's a mistake from you, buddy. Yeah. Get slowed down and get smacked. Oop. Gotta stay. Uh oh. Ah! Uh, whoo! Haha, <laughs> I thought that might have been it. Okay, flame wing. Alright, just get blasted regular. No blood bullets. Okay. I think I might be at the phase of the fight. Uh-oh. Provided I don't get stuck. Where I can just, uh, unload the executioner's gloves on you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Ha! And there we have it. The beast-possessed soul is no more. I appreciate the two bloodstone chunks. I'm not convinced that that particular um, blood gem will be super useful for me, but you never know. We'll find out. I do not have enough blood echoes to level up, but uh, I do have a bunch of high-level cold blood that these dungeons have given me, so maybe I'll find a way to make that work. I'll provide a build update in the next episode, I think. Anyway, that was a that was a good, that was a reasonable amount of attempts, I feel like, for that particular boss. Now we're going to go down. We're going to head to layer three. The cursed Tumaru eel. Here we are. We have a pre-lantern? Yes, we have a pre-lantern pathway. And as is always the question when we get to a layer three, will there be three layers or will there be four? And unlike before, <laughs> I don't think anyone knows the answer. Unless you're one of the, like, super... Um, knowledgeable tomb prospector people so uh, and there can't be too many people like that who are watching just because there can't be too many people like that <laughs> um but anyway oh 
Oh, okay, the door's closed. I was gonna say, I think it's time to run away if I'm seeing red enemies, but the door's closed, so, haha. Uh -huh. In uh, a hilarious defiance of them, I will say goodbye here. I will head back to the Dream Between episodes. And, you know, I hope you enjoyed uh, your time in this past episode, and I hope you join me again next time. Until then, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, no, I don't want to go back to the Dream right now. Just uh, give me a minute. Here, let's, uh, let's reframe these enemies. All right, and uh, we'll wave goodbye to them as I wave goodbye to you. Thanks for watching, everyone. Or, or, you know, maybe we'll just select it from the menu. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> I hope I see you next time.